Welcome to the Bible study. We're glad you found it. And if this is your first time, please know that there is a full transcript down below with all the Bible verses that are used for the commentary. And we always urge you to read the verses and, and God's word so that you can discern whether what you're hearing uh, on YouTube or TV or in the pulpit, uh, compare it to God's word so that you know you're not being deceived. Always read God's word. With all that said, let's get into Jude 1, 3. Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt we had to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once entrusted to all the saints. Some interesting points. First, in this verse we find that Jude departed from his initial inclination to address matters pertaining to salvation to instead warn his readers to aggressively defend the faith, meaning the truths the apostles had already communicated to the believers. Second, the change in theme of Jude's message was a result of divine inspiration. The Holy Spirit guided Jude to communicate what he intended them to write. 2 Peter 1.21 explains that Scripture is not a product of what man devised, but what the Holy Spirit wanted them to say. Nothing was inserted into the Word of God that God wanted left out, and nothing was left out that He wanted to be included. As we already studied in 1 Timothy 3.16, all Scripture is breathed by God. Third, Led by the Holy Spirit, Jude writes to encourage his readers to aggressively defend the faith that the apostles had taught, which became the primary aspects of God's revealed truth. Jesus supported and explained those truths communicated through the scriptures, meaning the Old Testament, which were captured and then written down by scripture writers after his ascension, resulting in the New Testament. Fourth, an important parallel to Jude's teaching here comes from the life of the Apostle Paul. Like Jude, Paul valued the faith. On his way to Jerusalem, not knowing what persecution awaited him there, Paul summoned the leaders of the Ephesian church to meet him at Miletus. At Miletus, he told the leaders that when he had ministered in Ephesus, he had preached faithfully, but he warned that false teachers would soon emerge from their midst. These Fierce wolves would distort the truth in order to draw away the disciples after them. From Acts 20, 29, and 30. Fifth, similarly, as we studied in the letters to Timothy, Paul urged his protege and young pastor Timothy to keep what he had heard from him as the pattern of sound teaching. He also commanded Timothy to perpetuate the faith. He writes, And what you have heard from me, in the presence of many witnesses entrusted to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. From 2 Timothy 2, 2. Application. Brothers, this verse reminds us of two key points. First, we must be listening and responsive when the Holy Spirit tugs on our hearts to do something we did not anticipate. Second, we, have, we all have a part in defending Scripture. Implied in that second point is that we must know the scriptures so that we will not be led astray. May we all listen carefully for what God is showing us through his word and obey him. That's our Bible study for today. We just pray that God blesses you as you strive to learn his word. Uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. And again, remember that uh, the full transcript is down below with the Bible verses uh, for context. And uh, we will see you on the next one. Thank you.